Hi, this is Randy Lee with Apex Tactical Specialties. Welcome to our tutorial on installing the reset assist mechanism. Our current version of the RAM is specifically for the Smith & Wesson M&P 940 and 357 SIG versions, which have no thumb safety and have the plug for the integral locking system. Um, later on, we'll have later newer versions that will retrofit the thumb safety versions as well as the 45 series. So I'm going to disassemble just the frame to get to the sear housing block. I'm assuming that people have already viewed our videos on how to install our DC AEK and the competition AEKs, so this should be pretty well simplified. I'm hitting the the sear disconnect lever or sear takedown lever and I'm just going to remove the slide assembly. Next, in order to access the sear housing block, I just have to remove the one roll pin at the back end. The RAM system consists of a compression spring as well as a small cylindrical arm which cams the sear, the trigger bar underneath the sear when you're releasing the trigger. So the way this is going to be installed is we remove the sear housing block and if you notice in the sear housing block for the ILS system, there's a straight channel that runs through transverse or perpendicular to the sear. If you also notice that on the RAM, we have a notch cut out. This notch is what is resting or is acting as the guide for the horizontal extension of the trigger bar at, towards the end of the, the trigger bar itself. So I'm putting the spring over the body, the main shank, and then from the Left side, I'm installing the ram through the hole. The flat that's on that portion of the body needs to be facing up. And I'll see if I can get this into a position or picture where you can see it. It's kind of hard because of the, the heat treating surface. But the flat that's cut into the notch on that bottom portion is what pulls the trigger bar underneath. It's probably a little bit easier to see once I take the trigger bar from the frame and I'm compressing the spring slightly and I'm just going to slide the bottom portion of that trigger bar underneath or actually on top of. So now the system is basically self-contained. From there I'm just going to insert it into the, the frame body now, depending on, on the plug as well as the dimensions on the, on, the frame, on the frame, you may have to pull on the trigger bar to compress the spring further. That pulls the head, the impact head of the ram in towards the center of the sear housing. That'll allow you to push it all the way in. Now I just reinstall the pin. And by the way, we do recommend the use of an eighth inch roll pin to do the installation and removal because the centering portion of the pin punch helps keep everything centered and the flat shoulder helps keep the coil pin from un un unraveling essentially. Okay, now I can check the function. So when I press the trigger, I see the sear acting normally. It's camming down and out of the way as if it was going to release the striker. Now if I press on the trigger bar, you can hear the ram pulling the trigger bar back beneath the sear. The secondary function again, if the trigger bar or the trigger spring breaks, this will still allow you to push the trigger forwards and you'll hear that snap as the ram pulls the trigger bar back under the sear so it's ready to fire. And we showed that in a previous video. Okay, 
Now we can reassemble the slide assembly. And we'll just check the function. So when I release, you can hear it, but more importantly, the translation from the RAM or the RAM movement causes more vibration to travel forwards through the trigger bar to the trigger. It also resonates because the larger surface on the RAM on the left side impacts the, the aluminum plug and transfers along the opposite side of the frame. And that's it.